What is happening y'all? Cowboy here with another guide for you and in this video we're going to be talking about missable trophy bosses in Elden Ring. Now this video isn't going to cover every trophy boss and we're also not going to show any footage of said bosses but there are quite a few bosses that you can completely miss during your playthrough that are needed for trophies uh, and they usually involve very intricate side quests or they are hidden in extremely well hidden places. Some of these in fact you can actually get locked out of if you perform certain actions. So I wanted to put a guide together to cover these bosses in particular. Now like I said we're not going to be showing off any boss fights but we are going to be looking at the map pretty extensively and going over quite a few areas and discussing some quests. So spoilers related to that stuff obviously. Uh, now with all that being said, let's jump in. And the bosses in particular we're going to be talking about are the Halig Tree bosses, which includes Loretta, Knight of the Halig Tree, Millennia, and Mog, Lord of Blood. We're going to be talking about the elusive Dragon Lord Placidusix. We're going to be talking about the Lich Dragon Fortisax, and on the way to him we actually encounter the Valiant Gargoyle, who's not super hidden, but a lot of people are struggling to find him. And then the last one is Estelle, Natural Born of the Void, who is related to the final portion of the Rani quest chain, which you may be familiar with if you watched the Moonlight Greatsword video. So to jump on in, the first thing we got to do is get the secret Halig Tree Medallion. And what you're going to want to do is head on over to the village of the Alba Nurix. Now, if you haven't been there before, right here from where I'm at at Folly on the Lake, you basically just kind of run towards the cliffs. And the cliffs will open on up and you'll make your way on into the village. But we're going to travel right on over there, make things a little bit easier. Now, once you are inside the village, there is a hidden NPC we need to talk to. There's actually two NPCs we need to talk to, but this one is the first. Now, riding on up to this guy, I would watch out for the perfumer right here. This guy can, uh, at my level, he's not a threat. But if you're a lower level, that guy can definitely pack a wallop uh, right on over here. He's gone, obviously, for me. But there will be an NPC that's disguised. And you can, you know, swing at the, the barrel or whatever he's in. He'll pop out. Talk to him for a little bit, and eventually he'll give you a half of a medallion. But we are not done there. We need to get the second half. So for that, I would suggest starting at the Scenic Isle Waypoint. Here we go. This stuff is all in Liernia. And from there, we're going to run on down south towards the cliffs, and we're looking for a cave. Now, the thing that's tricky with this cave is it's right here, the Lakeside Crystal Cave, but it doesn't immediately mark the location along the cliff. Whereas a lot of caves, caves you know, you pop on in, uh, and then right after you, you pop into that cave, you immediately have a marker that you're able to, to use. This one is very, very tucked into the cliff. And it's quite easy to just completely miss this if you don't know exactly where it's at. Just make sure I'm running right at it. Yes, I am. I have a couple markers on the map. Gotta figure out what some of those are. I was adding markers to various locations for the video, and I got a, I got a little bit ahead of myself on some of them. So once you hit the cliffs, just run along them, and you can see a little opening right here, and it's not marked or anything. You know, a lot of times there's there's these markings, but anyway, you'll head on through that opening, and that will eventually bring you out to the Slumbering Wolf Shack. And there's going to be an NPC here that you're going to want to talk to. Uh, show her that you have the second half of the medallion. And she will be like, oh, well, if he trusted you, I will trust you as well. She'll give you the other half and ask you to finish her quest for her, which involves the Alba Nurix. Now, to continue this quest, it's going to take quite a while. You're going to have to play up all the way through the capital of the game. Uh, eventually, you are forced to head on up north. You need to find a way to get past the thorns that are barring access to the major Erd tree. And to do that, you must go to the most northern region, the Land of the Giants. Now, to access the Land of Giants, you're going to head on over to the Grand Lift of Rold. But if you have the secret medallion at this point, you'll have an alternative use when you get to the, the lift. And that's what we're going to show. So same as if you were going to the land of the giants, but instead you'll get on over here to the grand lift and you can see hoist medallion, switch action, hoist secret medallion. Hoisting the secret medallion, instead of popping you out near the, the giant area, it'll pop you out here at the hidden path to the Halu Tree. Now, once you're in the hidden path to the Halu Tree, the first thing I would suggest doing is head on over here to the Apostate Derelict. Uh, over here, you'll actually be able to finish up the quest line that brought you all the way out here in the first place. Uh, head on over here, 
and that NPC is going to talk to this sad lady and, and give her like the seed of life to bring back the Albanurix or something. Uh, but the bigger thing we need to do is right here in Ordina, the liturgical town. And there's a puzzle to this town. You can work your way around and basically you go into a uh, alternate realm of the town, a dream version, shadow version, whatever you want to call it. And there are three bonfires that you're going to have to light while you're there or braziers, you know, fight the three fires. That is then going to open the path. And that will lead you on over to the Hallig Tree Canopy, which from there you can work your way down to the Hallig Tree Town, which from there you can work your way on down to the Hallig Tree itself. Now, as you go through this area, you'll end up having to fight your way past Loretta, Knight of the Hallig Tree, and then eventually at the very bottom, you will meet Millennia, Goddess of Ra. But both of those bosses are locked behind not only having the medallion, but also solving the puzzle here, just to make it over to the Hallow Tree. So definitely a lot of steps to get on over to him. Now, the next one, and this is a, a tricky boy. Uh, this is the Lord of Blood, and I spent quite a bit of time trying to find this guy, which by the way, uh, there are two Mogs. There's Mog Lord of Blood, and then there's Mog uh, King of Omens. And in case you're looking for the other Mog with this video, he's actually pretty easy to find. Back here in the, the capital, you just head on down. Uh, right from the, the lower city area, there should be a well you can climb into. Just take that, go down, and go down, and go down. Uh, and as you continue to go deeper, eventually you will end up finding Mog down there, uh, along with some of the, the stuff that you need if you're going for the Lord of Frenzy ending. But, you know, as long as you're exploring the capital, I felt that he wasn't really missable, so I didn't want to go, you know... The honest part of it is I didn't feel like crawling through the catacombs again, because that area sucked. It was like Blight Town 2.0, but worse somehow. So, so miserable. I'm like honestly kind of dreading going back there when it comes time for walkthrough prep because he's a trophy boss, which means I'll have to. So once you see this big tree, you know you're on the... Well, I say big trees, like there's not big trees anywhere, but kind of this big downed tree. All these trees have fallen, you're on the right track. Just to show where we're going on the map, right over here. And once you get over there, there's going to be a sending gate, but not just any sending gate. It's going to be a sending gate that has a big old puddle of blood around it. So go ahead and hit that. Things are going to be a bit dark when you first get here, so pop a lantern, torch, whatever you prefer as your source of light. Run on through a little bit, and then you will come out to the Mogwin Palace. Now this is the area that you've been able to see from uh, from Nakron and, and from the Ancestry Grounds and all that, all this time. But it is very well hidden. As far as I know, I think this is the only way to get to it. Through that super obscure sending gate that's hidden in the middle of nowhere in a region that's locked away by a key. Uh, but once you get here, the region itself isn't all that long. It's definitely not Legacy Dungeon tier. Uh, it takes half an hour to an hour if you really want to comb every inch of it. Make your way on up, and that will bring you to Mog, a Lord of Blood. Now, moving on from him, we're actually going to hop right on over here. Now, this is the, the Soifa Riverbank. Uh, just to show... Oh, actually, no, we don't want the Soifa Riverbank. We want to go down here uh, to the Soifra River Well. And from there... No, we don't want the Soifa Riverbank. Uh, from the Riverbank, you can fight your way past a couple stuff. And what we want to do is work our way up here towards the the hollow horn grounds we'll start from the ancestral woods now this is the deep route depths uh this area isn't as well hidden as some of the other ones but it's definitely a little bit obscure it's it's kind of tucked in there and i think this one is easy to overlook uh, and while we're going to go past the valiant gargoyle getting on over here the bigger thing over here is the lich dragon fortisax and you can get locked out of him if you don't advance the quest dialogue properly so I thought this one was definitely worth showcasing. I think I'm going off base a little bit here. I need to... Yeah, I yeah, am. That's over here. That's why you can't trust your markers all the time. I was just going to the wrong marker. I don't know what three's for, but we'll pass by two in a second, and then I'll just get rid of three. So once you get over here, you'll start noticing the jellyfish. Um, just to show where we're at. That's Hallowhorn. It's right here. And the jellyfish is how you know you're on the right track. Now, if you look, there's like a whole city over there, and we can actually reach that. There's a little drop down right here. And then you're going to follow this around. 
If you're following that, that's going to get you to the Aqueduct Basin Cliffs. That's going to get you to the Great Waterfall Basin. And then from the Great Waterfall Basin, there is a coffin we're going to have to use. Good old, good old Souls games. They love their coffins. So right from here, I mean, it's pretty obvious. It's like, huh, what's this coffin that's sitting out in the middle of nowhere? But so you rest in that coffin, and then that is going to teleport you on over to the Deep Root Depths. I actually think, I think this might be where we fight the Valiant Gargoyle as well. It's right here. But so anyway, hopping on over to the Deep Root Depths. Uh, you're going to fight your way through this place. There's a bunch of things, uh, including the armor that I'm wearing that everyone is seemingly obsessed with. The armor is found in here. Um, I think it's over here. Or over here. It's right by one of the chests. But anyway, as you make your way through this area, eventually you can make your way up top. And when you get up top, you will find Fia, the deathbed companion, uh, along with this giant thing, which is the uh, dead body of one of the demigods or something like that. I don't know. That's a lore thing. Uh, but you'll find her here, and she is going to have some dialogue. Basically, tell her you want a hug. I'm sure you've gotten a hug at Round Table Hold. Uh, this lady basically gives you a poise buff in exchange for some of your health. But talk to her. Tell that, like, yes, you want to share in the dream, and then continue her dialogue. Uh, and go through until you exhaust the dialogue, and eventually you're going to get put into a dreamlike state, and then that will take you to an alternate version of this area where you fight the Lich Dragon, Fortisax. This can still not be used. Hmm, that's another mystery for me to solve a later time. I think that relates to the rune you get from her. Uh, but anyway, that takes you to Lich Dragon, Fortisax. Moving on from there, let's go up top. Uh, we're going to briefly talk about the Ronnie quest line. Now, the Ronnie quest line, I've already gone super in depth in the Moonlight Greatsword video, so I would suggest watching that just because there are a ton of steps to it. Uh, but the, the long and short of it is you're going to come here, you're going to talk to Ronnie. After talking to Ronnie, you need to go down into Nakron, which involves uh, Radahan being dead. After Radahan is dead, Nakron is available right here. You can just dive straight on down. You climb on down, and you'll pop on out at Nakron, the Eternal City. You fight your way all the through the way through Nakron. Uh, you get a special dagger. You give that to Ronnie. Ronnie's going to disappear. After that, you go over to Rena's Rise. Rena's Rise is then going to teleport you on over uh, to the Ansel River, the secondary area with Noxtella, the Eternal City. You're going to fight all the way through that and eventually make your way to the Lake of Rot. You're going to fight your way through the Lake of Rot to make it to the Grand Cloister. And then right as you're about to access the Grand Cloister, right here exactly, there is going to be a coffin that you climb in. That's right, we have another coffin. And that is going to transport us on over to Estelle, Natural Born of the Void. Now, as far as I know, I don't think you can get to that city any other way than besides the Sending Gate in the Tower of Rena. And I don't believe that Sending Gate becomes accessible unless you advance Ronnie's quest line, which involves going down into Nakron. Uh, now, there's some other stuff involved in the quest line if you want to get, like, Blaith's armor and whatnot. But the biggest thing is you need to go into Nakron, find that dagger, and give that to Ronnie to then advance into uh, the secondary portion. Now, there's more to that quest, but, you know, that's, that's the big gist. Just doing that stuff, you can reach Estelle. Uh, and then besides Estelle, the last and perhaps the most well-hidden of the bosses is the Dragon Lord Placidax. Now, this guy is really, really tucked away. He's not in a missable area at all, because as soon as you uh, go to burn the tree, you're automatically teleported to Crumbling Faramazula. But from this area, there is a tricky little thing we can do to get down there to the Maelstrom and trigger this fight. So this is the uh, main area before the final boss of this zone. Basically, as you work your way through this zone, eventually you'll get up here, and then you go up the bridge, there's a mini boss fight, and then you work your way over here for the actual boss fight. So you're gonna want the Beside the Great Bridge Grace, because this is gonna be the closest, and you're probably gonna die fighting this boss. Definitely, I wouldn't say it's as, uh, as obscure as what you had to do to reach uh, Arc Dragon Peak with doing the emote. But this one's definitely up there, and I think they they knew how obscure the Arc Dragon Peak was, so they made this one a little bit more accessible by giving you a prompt instead of just, you know, assuming the player would lie down. So right over here, you can see there is a ledge, and we can drop on down. And then we have another ledge. 
And then we have another ledge, and another ledge, and another ledge. And we're making our way all the way down to the center of the maelstrom. And you'll notice how there are little bodies in all the graves, but one is missing. If you go to this grave right here, you'll have an option that says lie down, and upon lying down, you will then be treated to a delicious cutscene, and then brought on over. Uh, basically, time gets reround, uh, this area gets restored, and you have like Faramazula before it was crumbling, and a massive arena where you will fight one of the coolest bosses, I think, in From Software history. So that is going to wrap things up for this one. Um, like I said, these, these are all pretty well hidden bosses. Uh, and, you know, nothing's worse than going through the game and then realizing that you missed a boss because you just didn't know where he was at and he was tucked away in some obscure corner behind a sending gate that you needed a secret talisman to get. So anyway, wanted to get a video out covering all those locations. Now, obviously, we will have full boss strategies and all that with the 100% walkthrough. Uh, as opposed to a true 100% every item, we're going to be focusing it on getting 100% trophies because, to be honest, doing a 100% every item series would just take months, probably like half a year, uh, if not more, for this game because it is big. Uh, so either way, thanks for tuning on in. Y'all have a great day, and I will catch you next time.